Fred Borkowski here from soundguitarlessons.com. In this lesson, we are going to write a song from scratch using just the one, four, and five chord, just the primary three major chords in a major key. This is a really fun exercise, writing really simple harmony and seeing if we can make it a nice song with the melody that we write over it. So we're going to create a whole song structure, the entire form, multiple sections, the chord progressions for those, and we're going to write melody um, for each of those sections. So we'll have this full song harmonically and melodically, which is then ready to add lyrics to or add layers and production to, which we'll do in another video. We'll do that in the next video. But this will be a lot of work for one video, so let's dive in. It's a really fun exercise to try to work with very simple harmony or any kind of simple elements and see if we can still make something that we enjoy. Obviously choose a key in this video we're going to be in the key of G and I'm going to be playing with a capo on the seventh fret which means that the chord shapes I'm playing are as if I'm playing in the key of C. So this is a C chord shape, this is an F chord shape, and then this is a G chord shape. That's my one, four, and five chord and I might say this is C, I might say this is F. If I'm talking, that's very normal for guitar language if you're using a capo to refer to the shapes that you're playing. But really this is a G chord, and this is the four chord of G, so this is C, and this is the five chord of G, so this is D. Um, and I'll probably play this voicing a lot for C and then go to my four chord this way. This is a really common voicing where the bottom note stays in the bass. So it's a second inversion a C chord or F chord. Again, I might use those interchangeably because I'm, I'm in capo world. Um, and then I'm going to play the five chord like this often, where I don't need to touch or play any other strings because I'm using my fingers. Um, so if you were strumming, you'd have to put down a note here and put down a note here. Um, but I often play like that. That's right. So this is my G shape chord when I'm just plucking with my fingers because I'm playing six string and then open three, open, uh, open four, open three, and open two. So we got mapping out our chords, figure it out, do that for yourself in whatever key, make sure you have those. And then let's just start working on a song. And one thing that I love to do um, to make it a little easier along the way is to just map out a structure ahead of time. You definitely don't have to do this. Probably a lot of people don't do this, but um, it really makes it easy to just say, oh, we have this structure that's just a basic song structure. When does the verse happen? When does the chorus happen? Now we just need to fill it in. So the structure that I would like to do is have some kind of intro, and then we'll do a verse, a pre-chorus, a chorus, and we'll repeat those, the verse, the pre-chorus, the chorus, which is very common. We'll do a second chorus, then we'll do a bridge, and we'll play the chorus again, and that'll be the full song. Very common. Millions of songs have that exact uh, song structure, so we'll just start filling things in that way. Let's write the chord progressions for each of those sections. Let's go to the verse, and I'm going to do the one chord, the four chord, and then the five chord, and then back to the one chord. So that's gonna be my uh, progression for the verse. Doing some embellishment and some colorful tones that I'm adding in just for fun, but you don't have to do that. I'm really thinking of it just as the pure triad, but like when I play F, or the four chord rather, and add that top open string, it makes it a major seven chord. When I played the five chord and played that same note, it added it as a six. I might play adding the flat seven to the five chord. You don't have to understand that stuff. Just play whatever version of the chord works for you. Just wanted us to hear that. For the pre-chorus, I'm gonna keep the same exact progression for a reason, as far as the lesson goes. Because if we keep the same progression, but we have a new section, it forces us to use the melody to make it different, to make it stand out or sound like a new place. So that'll be a great thing to work on when we get to the melody. So the verse and the pre-chorus are both going to be this uh, progression. Four chord, five chord, and then one. Okay, so for the chorus, let's go ahead and go to the four chord, and then the five chord, and go back to the four. So this is what we'll do for the chorus, just those two chords. And then of course, when the chorus is done, it'll land back on the tonic chord, and that sounds really like a nice arrival. So I like that this chorus progression, It's kind of hanging in midair 
wanting to get back to that sea. There's a little bit of tension there. Um, and I like that. It feels like there's it's actually a different place that we went to. Um, for the bridge, I think we're just going to do something extremely simple, maybe stay on one chord. But that's it. Those are all the sections that exist. And we'll figure out the intro later, probably use a piece of something from one of the other sections. So what I would do, of course, after you map some of that out is just make sure you play it connected in time because you might ed you might want to edit it before you start adding the melody. So let's just hear it once between those sections. So this is the verse. Now pretend that happened again. Let's go to the pre-chorus, which is the same progression. So the melody is going to have to make it stand out. Okay, now we're going to the chorus. That sounds like a nice place it went. And it's the chorus, then back to the verse. Um, yeah, it works. So now we can dive in and just start writing melodies over this. And so we'll we'll spend time writing this, writing the melodies over each progression, and then um, I'll of course play them for you with the chords and. Uh, playing the lead melody over it with a second layer of guitar so you can hear how it all uh, comes together. This is where it really gets fun for me because uh, I love, I just love the craft of it and really thinking about how the melody sits over the chords with chord tones and scales and structure and you know where, where it's all going to, what, what we're trying to say with it, how we're trying to tell a story with it. So what I like to do is just make sure I can see really clearly the chord tones. So here I am on this C chord shape, and I'm thinking, okay, that's in the chord, that's the third, that's the fifth, that's the root, that's the third, that's the fifth. And then, of course, I want to see my scale over it as well, maybe play it with the root. I have a lesson on doing fingerstyle improvisation where the th thumb is just doing this constant bass thing. Um, I love that as an exercise because it just feel, it feels like real music. I can sit and improvise with that all day and just have fun with it. So with the knowledge of the scale, the chord tones, being able to play the bass with it and mix it all up and play around with it, with this, by practicing all of that stuff, it really does make it so we can find musical options when we want to improvise or be creative or, or compose almost instantaneously. We can come up with, you know, that could be the melody or not, right? So just being able to very quickly find options allows us to find something that resonates with us um, and understanding why we like it. Um, so advocating here for all the exercise stuff that I often talk about um, on my channel. So I would do that with all of the chords. So I'd go to the F chord and just listen, you know, make sure you see all that stuff, the scale around it, the chord tones, improvise with it. In this case, we're still just in the, in what feels like a C major scale, no matter what root we are, we're on. So here's the five chord root. So this feels very exercisey, like, you know, like I would often have a video about how to work on this kind of stuff. And now we get to really do it in real music instead of just saying, when is this gonna be useful um, in real music? So. So I know that this is the five of C. And I know I'm gonna go to that next chord. So I'm going five, 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 six, five. I really like that. So we're going to use that for the melody. Really nice little resolution to that. That's the flat seven of this five chord. So we'll use that as the main structure of our verse melody. Let's play it again because it should probably happen twice.
Okay. So that's going to happen twice in the verse. And then we have to go to the pre-chorus. So how's that going to be different? Well, what I like about this is I can just say, well, we use this range. So let's go to something that has more energy to it, way higher up, okay? Um, that's why I love just playing around with the scales. I can see all those options. I like that. That makes it a F major seven chord or C major seven chord. So, uh, okay. So we're going to use that as the bri or as the pre-chorus, I mean. So we went high up into higher note than we've been in the range. And I'm always aware of the notes or the chords that I'm coming to and thinking, is this fresh? Is this new? Have I been to this place before? And therefore, is it going to have a new feeling to it? And similarly, I'm always thinking, where's my highest note so far? If I go to a new note in the melody and it's the highest note I've played so far, that has a certain feeling and energy to it that... Um, that I just want to be very aware of. And similarly, you know, where's the actual highest note of the entire song? But especially like jumping up to something that we haven't been to yet um, really gives it uh, some energy and gives it this feeling of being at a new section. So let's connect these two together. This is the verse. And we're gonna do that twice for the verse. comes the pre-chorus. Okay, now instead of repeating that twice, let's have it be do something different because we could easily repeat it twice. Remember, I'm always thinking what's happening in the harmony. And this just takes drilling and improvisation work and chord tone mapping and scales. But um, when flat seven, three of the tonic chord, baking those kinds of movements from into the melody of just a simple song makes it sound, to me anyway, so effective and, and lovely. Um, so how are we going to be do different? do something different for the second time, second phrase of the pre-chorus. Well, we haven't gone up here. So now again, I'm aware that we're going higher than we were before if we go there. Um, so I'm getting into like a melodic sequence and this comes up all the time. And I'm always working on those kinds of movements and patterns so I can hear it, so I can feel it, so I can improvise with it, so I can write with it very quickly um, when I'm composing. So let's try that again. And let's move up to here. So that'll be our pre-chorus. Ready to hear it again in completion? Here's the pre-chorus. pausing a little because I'm still thinking through it, but um, that really feels like it's going somewhere, right? That really feels, so we, you, could you feel that energy uh, when it went higher than it had before? You know, the second phrase of the pre-chorus. And 
every single note I'm aware of what the chord tone is or what the scale degree is and how it's in relation to the chord. So, da, 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 three, three, four, five of C, or this G chord. Da, 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 landing on the root of the four chord. Da, 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 root of the five chord, flat seven, six, five, which is the two of the scale and back to so don't let that overwhelm you. I just want to show you with something so simple and catchy, sounds like a children's song. Um, I'm really aware of the harmony. You know, I want to, I, I strive to be as, you know, as in control of that as like a classical composer would be writing something like a little children's melody or something like that. Even though it's so simple, it makes it all the more powerful that we know exactly why um, a certain note sounds the way it does and you know why we targeted it that way. So now we have the chorus. We know we're going to the four chord. This is why it's so helpful to have mapped it out already to have the, the structure and the chords because now we don't have to think from scratch. We're just saying, oh, we know the chords. We know this next section, let's fill it in. And of course, a lot of people will write with the melody first and then harmonize it, but we're just doing it this way. There's no right or wrong way. Um, so we'll go. Let's do a sequence. So that sequence is really nice. And I will take time, like if I wasn't in the middle of this video right now, and I came across that in the in my writing, and I felt like it was useful or just it stimulated me. I felt like I was on the right track. I actually would pause and do a, a practice session on on that, just like I did, right? I'll go through scales and just really feel it, feel it and see it because that clearly is musical vocabulary that is useful. Um, and I just love the combination of these two things, all this technical mapping out and then hopefully having that so down that we can let loose like crazy and just be creative. So uh, here's the four chord. <laughs> Keep going with that. We gotta wrap it back up to the C. That really works. Whoops. Oops, I was on the wrong chord. The four chord. Once again, we landed on that note. That is the major seven of the four chord. Kind of nice. Okay, one more time, just so you hear that. Feels very intentional, right? It feels very structured, which is which is what we want. So um, we got a verse, we got a pre-chorus, we got a chorus. Um, for the bridge, I just want to stay on the tonic chord. some of that rhythmic material. Just something like that for the bridge. We'll keep that a little looser for now um, and move on. What I'm trying to do is bridge all the technical stuff with then the creative stuff, which is my personal North Star, right? To, to write stuff, whatever it is, to be creative with all of the material that I like to practice. So we wrote the chord progression, the whole song form, and we wrote melodic material for each of it. Um, I'm sure it's hard to track throughout the video how it's gonna come out. So let me play it for you. I'm gonna play a layer of guitar and I'll play the uh, melody over my chords. I'll play the chords on this guitar and I'll play the melody on an electric guitar so we can hear how it sounds, um, imagining it as a full song structure. I forgot to mention the intro. I'll play the four chord to the five chord, which is borrowing it from the chorus. And that's kind of nice because then it's going to land on the tonic chord for the beginning of the verse. So I'll do that as the intro. And I'm just going to play intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, and then land 
um, on the tonic chord. That's all we need to hear because then that stuff repeats. So let's see how it comes together. Part of being able to compose quickly uh, around chords is of course knowing the vocabulary such as the scales. So I have a free download called the Printable Parent Scales PDF and these are the diagrams that I used to practice. I remade them but they're the same layout of what I used to learn all of my scales and get them mapped out all over the guitar. It's the seven parent scales which all other scales and modes are born from and it's the multiple shapes and forms that you can practice those scales all over the guitar. So you have uh, the exact shapes that you need to play them anywhere in any key and around any chords if you wanna compose or improvise and all of that. So you can get that for free with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. In the next video, next week, I post a lesson video every week, we'll finish this song off we got the whole structure chords and melody so let's fill it in with lyrics and i'll share a little bit um, of how i think of writing lyrics not an expert on it but i have some thoughts and some things that i find inspiring so i'm going to share with that with you next week and we'll throw some lyrics on it and we'll talk a little bit about recording it um, with the guitar and doing some layers and stuff like that so that will finish that song off and we'll get a full kind of production of it with the lyrics and we'll see how it turns out so i hope to see you in that lesson next week thank you so much for watching take care and happy practicing <laughs>